This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review and welcome to my Watch Emporium. Yes, this is the review of the second generation Moto 360 smartwatch or the 2015 edition, whatever you want to call it. And we have a whole lot of watches right here. It does look like a Watch Emporium, doesn't it? So we'll have some comparisons going on right now. But I can tell you one thing that really excites me. This is the women's model. Other than Apple, nobody's thought about us poor ladies who don't want to have, you know, something the size of Texas on our wrists. And it actually looks pretty nice. Look at it now. So here it is, Motorola's second generation watch now going into its sleep screen, which is a little hard to see here under a studio lights. This is the regular display. Notice that we actually have a moving second hand. That's a little bit brave. We don't see that in a lot of watch faces, probably because it consumes even more battery power. But more importantly, probably because, gosh, Android Wear watchmakers are finally getting it. These things need to look like watches and need to look like pretty things like jewelry that you wear. Even if you're a guy, you care about your fashion sense. That's why there are so many nice high-end watches for guys. And this indeed does. Now, this is the 42 millimeter woman's model that sells for $329. Price is a little higher than the base $299 for the second gen Moto 360 because rose gold costs a little extra. The leather band is standard, however. Now, this looks pretty nice on my wrist, which I can't say about many first generation watches. They were all way too huge. And 42 millimeter isn't that small. That's the larger size for the Apple Watch, and it also happens to be the same size as the Huawei watch we just reviewed. Though the Huawei has bigger lugs, the part where the band mounts, notice, so that does make it look a lot bigger, but these both have the same diameter. In fact, they're very close in thickness, which means, you know, I think the rose gold is slimming here. If it was silver, this would look bigger. And also the, the outward chamfer is a little bit slimming on this too, but this is actually 11.4 millimeters versus 11.3 millimeters. So it's still kind of a hockey puck, but not as much as the 46 millimeter edition for guys. That one's the same diameter as the original Moto 360 watch, and it is gosh darn huge, even big for a lot of men. Now with the 42 millimeter, which this is, you can get this in men's or women's. And we're going to show you some Motomaker options so you can see just how much you can customize it, because that's a lot of the charm of this watch. Anyway, the men's edition has bigger lugs, sort of like the Huawei watch did, because wider bands. The big one, the biggest one, the 46 millimeter, has a 22 millimeter band, and the men's 42 millimeter watch has a 20 millimeter band, and the woman's is a 16, so it's the narrowest. Very easy to take this off. It's just a sliding pin right here on both parts, so you can swap your bands pretty easily. That's another thing folks want. And this big bullseye here is the optical heart rate monitor, something we saw on the Huawei watch and, of course, on the Apple watch. Now, for you ladies out there who are actually thinking about getting a watch, and this would be a candidate to give you an idea of some size, and once again, going back to our Jewelry Bazaar Festival look here, you can see the difference. This is a pretty big size swatch watch right there. This is a, probably an average size fossil watch. So yeah, it's big compared to a lot of ladies' watches, but it's still manageable on the wrist. And you know, with a smartwatch, you don't want the screen to get too teeny either, because you want to be able to see it and interact with it. Compared to last year's Asus Zen watch, which at the time was one of the more styling watches, I, this looks a whole lot more evolved, doesn't it? A lot more analog watch-like. Also a lot smaller. This, <laughs> this looks like something out of the original Star Trek show from the 60s almost now, doesn't it? It's great how fast these are moving along. Now if you compare it to the Pebble, and this is the, the newest model of Pebble, Pebble looks... I'm sorry, Pebble people. I know there are those of you who love your Pebble, but it looks like... Uh, cheap watch, doesn't it? It's all plasticky and everything like that. So a lot more class and a lot more style here. Of course, this also costs more. And then we have the Apple Watch. This is the Sport Edition with a third-party metal band on it. This is the 38 millimeter, so you can see the difference in size there. Not too bad, actually, right? And I have to say that the Moto at least looks like a traditional watch more so than the Apple Watch does. As you'd expect with the smartwatch, it comes in a, well, in this case, an interesting and rather large box here. You get a, a wall ward style charger with a cable, USB cable, and a wireless charging stand. We'll go into that later when we talk about battery life and stuff. One thing that's really important here is that it's gotten a lot faster. The, the old watch was a real slow thing. You press and hold the dial here to get to your settings and to all of your applications on there. It's a lot zippier than the first gen watch, thanks to that 1.2 gigahertz quad-core Snapdragon 400 that's being used in pretty much every Android Wear watch. As the usual, 512 megs of RAM and four gigs of internal storage. And you can even, if you want, put some music on here if you pair this with some Bluetooth headphones so you can go out and jogging. The watch faces on this are pretty nice. I think Huawei's are a bit prettier. And we've got widgets on this one, so you can see we've got the weather over here, the date, and if you tap on the date, it'll 
Stop being so shy. It'll take you to your calendar. Now, sometimes there's a delay and you think you haven't successfully tapped on it. And if we want to see the weather, that was pretty good speed. Now, you can't really tell on this watch face because it's mostly black. So I'm going to change the watch face with Android where you just press and hold. And then you can choose between watch faces. And we'll choose this, I suppose, extremely ladylike watch face right here. So the Moto flat tire is still here. Some people really hate that. Some folks have learned to live with it. The reason it's there is because there's an ambient light sensor, a little dot right in that black section right there. And that is actually a very handy thing to have on the watch. So you don't have to run it at max brightness just to make sure that you see it when you go outside to lunch on a nice sunny day. That is what it is. It's part of, well, having a Moto watch. This is an LCD display. It's also improved from the last Moto display that looked a little bit washed out. It's covered in Gorilla Glass 3. No sapphire crystal like we get on the Huawei watch. So. Uh, that gives you a little more peace of mind, I think, compared to Gorilla Glass 3 when it comes to something like a watch where you're liable to be banging it into door jams and all sorts of other adventurous things. Resolution is slightly different between the two sizes, very slightly. 360 by 325 for our 42 millimeter watch, and it's 360 by 330 millimeter for the 46 millimeter watch. So you're not going to be able to really tell the difference. Obviously, on the smaller watch face, your pixel density is going to be slightly higher. In general, it's sharp and it's colorful. It's not one of those beautiful OLED displays, though. The watch is also IP67 dust and water resistant, so that means you can wash the dishes if you get splashed a little bit. If you get rained on, it's not going to hurt it. It does not mean you can take this going diving. No way. No. Mm -mm -mm. Got microphone holes on the side here. This has two microphones to listen to, so you can say, okay, Google, what time is it? Like, you're not going to ask your watch what time it is, I hope, but you get the idea there. I did try asking it what the battery percentage was, and it actually gave me a web link to facts about battery percentages. So there is not all the queries you might think of that would be useful that are available yet via OK Google, but it's not bad. Speaking of OK Google, well, this is a Android Wear watch. That means that all the processing actually happens on your phone, and we happen to have it paired with our LG G4 here, and this is the app that you're going to use. You can choose different watch faces. You can load on more apps. Now, a lot of the apps are really just ex extend notifications to the smartwatch. They don't do a whole lot of fancy stuff. There are a couple of games and things like that. It gives you suggestions, and a lot of them have ca uh, companion apps that go on your Android smartphone. If these two become disconnected, they talk to each other via Bluetooth and also Wi-Fi. We'll talk about that in a minute. If they become disconnected, your watch will still tell the time. It can still do step counting. It has a step counter. And it can still check your heart rate. It won't be able to give you up-to-date weather, calendar appointments, any of that stuff, because all that stuff is pulled from the phone. This is a new generation of watches that sync to iOS as well as Android, though with iOS you pretty much get notifications and nothing else. And it has single-band Wi-Fi, 2.4 gigahertz, BG wireless, to extend the range between your phone and the watch. So as long as both the phone and the watch are on Wi-Fi, they can actually communicate with each other. So that's handy. It means if you leave the phone on your desk and you walk to your buddy's cubicle, or if you leave it in the den and then go into the living room if you're at home, they'll still be able to talk to each other so your watch won't become a relatively dumb product. Now to get to your apps and settings, you press and hold on the crown button. One thing I really like is the remote shutter. It actually works pretty well. You tap it and instantly. My phone has gone into camera mode right there. And let's give the camera something to actually look at like that. And it's mirrored on the watch display right there. And so I can tap it to take a picture. How often you need that sort of thing, I don't know. But I like the fact that it is very instantaneous. It actually gives you a nice viewfinder there. It works with any brand of Android phone. I would love to see this actually for my digital SLR camera, or my interchangeable lens camera, where sometimes you actually need remote shutter release because you don't want to press the shutter and cause any vibration. Maybe that'll be in our future. Who knows? Well, now we've got the usual built-in applications in Google Fair. We have Find My Phone. You can turn it into a flashlight. You've got your Google settings right there. Google Hangouts is on board. 
LG heart rate. It actually got pushed through by my LG phone. I thought that was pretty sneaky of it. You have maps on here. It, again, is going to use your phone to give you a little map on screen. You can get limited directions on there, too. Now, Moto Body, I thought, great. Here's something that's going to maybe challenge the Apple Watch, but not so much. It's really... It keeps track of your heart rate and your steps. Something these are things that the watch can already do, and you know Google Fit also provides some of this information. But it does bring in your heart rate as well to try to give an idea of how many calories you've used if you wish it to do so. The heart rate monitor on this is very good. It actually works. You can just say, "Okay, Google," and ask it what my heart rate is. Hopefully, it'll discover my pulse at some point. So far, it's actually been quite good at it. And it's working. There we go. A little bit high probably because I was just starting to get a little bit annoyed at the fact it was taking so long. But generally speaking, it's pretty quickly and it's pretty accurate when I compare it to a large home device used to measure your heart rate and your blood pressure and all that sort of stuff. And when compared to the Apple Watch and with fitness bands. So does a job there. Sorry, unlike, uh, sorry, I know I mentioned the Apple Watch, but it has to be done because it's a competing product. Unlike the Apple Watch, you don't get the full fitness stuff here, or nor the stuff you would get with the fitness watch. So if you want to use it for cycling, rowing, anything like that, any kind of workout, no, it has a step counter. That's what it has. And it'll use your heart rate in conjunction and your location to try to figure out how much vigorous walking or running you might have been doing to just guess at your calories. And that is about it. So how about charging and battery life? Well, we're here in our guest bed right now, which happens to be that Casper mattress. So those of you who watch our unboxing video, our only unboxing ever of a mattress, probably will forever be our only unboxing of a mattress. Anyway, the Casper mattress, in case you're wondering, is holding up really well. It is comfy. Been enjoying spending some nights in the guest room instead. Not that my spouse appreciates that. Back to the watch. Right here we have the charging stand, a little bit of close encounters of the third kind, a kind of little funny monolith. It's pretty weighty. It's not going to knock over easily. And unlike the Huawei watch that had very annoying little pins on it that you had to line up just right for its magnetic charger, this you can just plop on just like so. It's pretty idiot-proof. I like idiot-proof because, you know, at midnight when I go to bed and I'm pretty tired, I really don't want to have to study lining up pins or anything like that. just sits on there. The 42 millimeter, be it men's or women's, is a 300 milliamp battery, which is pretty typical of an Android Wear watch. The 46 millimeter nets you 400 milliamps. Obviously, they have more room for a battery inside. Now, Motorola claims that you'll get a day and a half out of the 42 millimeter and up to two days on the 46 millimeter. Optimistic, sure. I like to have the ambient display on, which means there's a, a, a faint sleeping display that shows you the time at all times. You don't have to, you know bring up your wrist all the time in a dramatic manner to make sure it turns on if you want to see the time. It really is a watch, the 42 millimeter. You're just going to charge it at night. You're going to have this on your bedstand, and it'll last the, through the day easily. Even if you use it a lot, which I have, uh, going from 8 a.m. to 11 at night, I've always had about 30% charge left, and that's even with some vigorous walking where it's actually checking my heart rate and doing a lot of step counting and all that sort of thing. And now we're taking a look at Moto Maker. Now, stores like Best Buy are going to stock a variety of configurations you see here. But if you want to, you can just order it yourself on Moto's website. Here we have for $329 the version that I bought, and that is stock at Best Buy. And if you want to go for a men's, right there, here's the men's defaulting to black. And you can choose the bezel and the chamfer. Now this is kind of neat. So you can get a pattern on it and say you want a, a contrasting bezel right there. That gives it a little classy look. You want to have a pattern on it. For the women's it's going to be a straight pattern. For the men's it's a cross hatch pattern right over here around your dial right there. Now for the casing color, if you want gold, it's going to cost you $30 extra. Just like for the ladies, it's rose gold that's going to cost extra. Well, that's an interesting kind of bumblebee thing. Here with Motomaker, you can really do some weird things. The leather band is standard. There is no charge for the leather band. And if you want metal, you've got gold, you've got silver, you've got black. You get the idea. So there's a lot of choices here. You can even have them preload a couple of watch faces for you. Now, if you pile on the options, the $50 metal band, and you want a gold casing, you can get this up to $399. So certainly not as cheap as the last edition model. But then compared to the price of the Huawei watch or the Apple watch, it's not that bad. And it's actually a fairly attractive looking product too, even when you put together a weird set of colors like I did. So that's the Moto 360 2015 edition. Definitely a very strong evolution of a, one of our favorite smartwatches among the Android Wear selection that we first saw. And 
you know, the first one was a work in progress for sure. It had a lot of quirks, it had a lot of bugs, not the best CPU choice, the display. So they've addressed all those things. We have the, the standard Snapdragon 400, it's CPU in here, a much nicer LCD. It may not be OLED, but it's very nice. Battery life a whole lot better too. And it's good looking. I just, about a week ago, we reviewed the Huawei watch, which also is very good looking. We're saying, is it the best looking one yet? Well, it certainly has competition now. And as you've seen from the Moto Maker selection for these watches, that's a brilliant idea. I mean, it's a piece of jewelry. You want to make it your own, you can. And the price, you know, it's gone up a little bit from last year's model, but it's still not insanely high. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to visit our website for the full written review. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel.